So I'm going to talk in 10 minutes. Maybe I'll take one extra minute. But I'm going to talk about what's going on with the internet. And I'm going to give you a rapid review of the way that people are using the internet and what's happening on it. And I think with that background, uh, we'll be able to better understand what is likely to happen or what possibly might happen uh, as we go forward. So I call this the internet giveth and the internet taketh away because if you stand in its way, it will show you no mercy and it will kill you. If you ride it, you can um, make a lot of money. It's given us a lot. Here are some of the companies that uh, came out of nowhere that have changed our lives in a, in a fundamental way, whether that's entertainment or convenience of shopping or better prices. It just goes on and on. But it's also taken a lot away. And as I said, if you're on the wrong side of this, you will have a problem. And here are some of the industry sectors, some of the companies that have had problems. You, we know what it's done to the music label business. US Postal Service losing $10 billion a year today. Uh, it's devastated the print advertising industry. Uh, it's changed the way that we buy travel uh, services, put a lot of travel uh, agencies out of business. And uh, just the list goes on. For the consumer, though, for us, it's been nothing but positive. And um, I think all of our lives have been changed for the better by the internet. But if you look at uh, how these changes that have occurred uh, might um, evolve as we go forward, let me show you what's going on in terms of how technology is accelerating in terms of change. And some of these st stats, when I um, put them together, uh, floored me. So the time to reach 50 million global users. Radio, it took 38 years. Took television well, faster, 14 years. Took the internet four years. Facebook, just over three and a half years. The iPhone got there in under three years, 2.8 years. Android devices, just over two years. Google Plus, it took it 88 days to get there. The iPad beat that. It took 80 days to get to uh, 50 global users. So we're in a world where things are changing at a pace the likes of which we've never seen before. So now in the US, we've got over 200 million people who are on the internet. They spend about 30, 35 hours per person per month uh, online. And that's where the growth is occurring. We're seeing a rapid escalation in terms of the, num the amount of time that, that people are spending on the internet. What are they doing? There's a whole myriad of things that they can do. Um, I've listed them out here. The long tail is alive and well. And I just wanted to highlight here what's going on with online video. We've got 180 million Americans now will spend 18 hours watching online videos each month. That is still only about 6% of the amount of time that they spend watching television. So there's a massive upside potential that still exists. Today, in one day, we'll have about 90 million Americans will watch at least one online video. Facebook came out of nowhere. 160 million Americans will now visit Facebook at least once once in a month. And look at this stat. About one-sixth of people's overall time spent on the internet is now spent on Facebook. And if that wasn't a staggering statistic, how about this one? It's up 57% versus a year ago. And it's changed the way that we interact with, uh, with each other. Online ad spending. Uh, this is, um, this is, I think, has founded, basically been the foundation of a lot of, uh, a lot of internet businesses. Online advertising spending is now bigger than newspapers, it's bigger than magazines, it's bigger than radio, and it's equivalent to about a third of all television. And look at that growth rate for the first half of the year, up 27% versus a year ago. And so there's a lot of media dollars that are shifting from traditional media to the internet. How are people getting online is changing. 93% access via a fixed line computer. 7% are now getting online via the use of a mobile device or, or a pad. And that's where the change is really occurring, and it's occurring really quickly, because that non-computer traffic has doubled in just the past year. If we look at the, where the, uh, the, the, the mobile and tablet splits up, about two-thirds of it is now coming from smartphones. About 28% is coming from tablets. 85 million people now have a phone, smartphone. And that number is up a staggering 30 million people 
in just the course of one year. We were running earlier in the year at about a million new smartphone subscribers in the US in a week. Uh, uh, Google claims to be activating a half a million new Android devices per day on a, on a global basis. And this device is causing some major repercussions to occur within a lot of industries. I'll come back to that. Uh, E-commerce, a number of speakers before me have touched on e-commerce. I want to give you some of the stats. $255 billion will be spent this year on e-commerce, 160 or just over, 160 billion, just over 60% on non-travel, uh, and then uh, just under 100 billion on travel. And the growth rate is 12% versus a year ago. And maybe because of the price advantage that, that the internet offers, this is happening. Consumers are shifting rapidly from buying in a retail store to buying online. So that growth rate that you see there is about three times uh, faster than what's happening at, at retail. And I think in this kind of economic, uh, economically tough uh, reality that we live in, uh, the internet and e-commerce looks even more attractive to people. And, and we're seeing the difference between online growth and, and offline growth actually uh, increase. There's another stat. One in every 10 discretionary dollars are now spent on the internet. And look at this. One in every three computers is bought online, and every second something is bought on eBay via a mobile device. The two drivers of, of uh, e-commerce, convenience, obviously, but lower prices. And yes, we've got the tax advantage that uh, you know, Amazon and, and others can, uh, can leverage. We'll see if that, that continues, given some of the fighting that's going on uh, over that. But clearly, price is one of the drivers of e-commerce. And if you look at the way that consumers can find the best price or the lowest price, there are a myriad ways that they can do that. I'll just show you some of them. In a month, 185 million people will visit a retailer site. They can compare products. They can check prices, et cetera, et cetera. Don't like that? Go to a comparison shopping engine. 85 million people do that every month. You want coupons? 43 million people visit those sites. Obviously, Groupon is the big, big driver of the growth in that sector. And if none of that works, just go off and conduct a search query using any one of the, uh, the engines. 219 million people um, uh, avail themselves of, of, of that in a, in a month. And here is where this mobile device is really beginning to change the way that people shop. One in three people who own uh, a smartphone are saying that they've used it to compare prices while they're shopping in a retail store. And I'm hearing more than one retailer say that the mobile device, the smartphone, is their worst nightmare. They might say it uh, another way. They might say, I never thought that I would be competing with the internet in my own store. And what's happening is that people are burning up a lot of salespeople's time in the store, touching, feeling, checking the products, and when they get to buy it, uh, before they do that, they scan the barcode and off they go on the internet and maybe they end up buying it there. And this is causing some major changes to occur in the way that um, retailers are marketing themselves all the way down to the size of the particular store. One prediction is that we will see smaller stores in the, f in the future and they're not going to be burning up a lot of very expensive uh, retail space carrying a lot of inventory. You'll get the product shipped to you directly from, uh, from some other low-cost warehouse. So, it seems to me that we are in a situation now where, unlike any other time in history, pricing power has moved into the hands of the consumer. And I think that's great for us, the consumers, but I think it poses some real challenges for manufacturers and for, for, for brand manufacturers. And so if you look at that reality, um, you know, what does it mean for, for a brand? How is a brand going to... Uh, be successful in that kind of a world. It seems to me that if you don't have a price advantage, you better have some other really compelling value proposition that you're providing the consumer. Otherwise, I think you will get really seriously hurt by the transparency in prices and the ease with which consumers can check prices. So I'm going to leave you with three thoughts for the future that um, I think help address some of these issues. First of all, if you don't shape your future landscape, the internet will shape it for you. 
And as I said earlier, I don't think you can stop this thing, clearly. And it shows no mercy. And you have to uh, be riding it rather than trying to resist it. Uh, I think that with a bit of luck, uh, social networks like Facebook will allow brands to establish better and different relationships with consumers so that the communication is not just one way. It will be more of a dialogue. I also suspect that we will see uh, a renaissance, if you will, in advertising creativity to help distinguish a brand and the value of a brand uh, uh, to the consumer rather than having just price be, be the basis on which the decision is made. And then finally, big data is here to stay. But while the internet is generating a lot of data, I think it's really important that the use of the data be um, applied in a way that, that makes sense. Uh, just give you w one, one simple example, and I'll, uh, and I'll end. Uh, if you're going to measure the effectiveness of internet advertising, don't just measure it in terms of its impact on e-commerce. Measure it in a holistic sense and include the impact that online uh, advertising has on retail sales. If you do that, you'll get an ROI that's about five times higher than if you just look at, uh, at ROI on the basis of, uh, of e-commerce results. That might sound really obvious, but the number of companies that are still in a silo kind of structure or with a silo mentality that are not looking at the world in a holistic sense uh, you know, would surprise you. And those are probably the companies that are going to get hurt as the internet continues this, uh, this march uh, that, uh, that we've already experienced and that undoubtedly we will. That's it. Thank you very much.